Now, in the next of the cycle of plays from Dorothy L. Sayers, Jesus is arrested and his disciples are devastated. King, a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ. The tenth play, The Princes of This World. Then the captain and soldiers of the temple guard took Jesus and bound him, and led him by night first to Annas, that was father-in-law to Caiaphas, the high priest. But Peter followed him afar off, and so did another disciple. Keep them in sight, John. We must see the end of this. I know what the end will be. But so does he, strung up on the gallows. John. Oh, Peter. We said we would die with him. What right have we to be alive? He didn't want us killed. He told them to let us go. Oh, that doesn't make me feel any better. We ran away. Oh, I should have died fighting. He neither fought nor ran. He faced fear empty-handed. Look. Look. Huh? They're all going to the high priest's house. Oh, that's done it. We can't get in there. Yes, we can. I've been there before. The servants know me. Why, of course. You're a Zebedee of the priestly line. Yes. Do you think they'll let us both in? We can try. Come on. Run with me and we'll catch up with the party. Yes. By the way, I've got another man with me. Oh, bring him in too. May I? Thank you. You there, Peter? Uh, yes. The portress says you may come in. Oh, that's that's very good of you. And she says we can slip up these stairs. Hey, no, no, no! I can't let anybody upstairs. I don't know. Uh, but you can come and sit by the fire. Very good of you. Run along, John Barnes, Ebony. We look after your friend. It's up the stairs and along the gallery. You can't miss it. Thank you, Tabitha. Oh, oh. oh man, you look all in. How did you get mixed up in this? You're not a follower of this man Jesus, are you? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, ju just a friend of John's. Well, you must keep him out of trouble. Yes. I wonder what is going on up there. Is that the prisoner? 
think, Brother Shadrach, we might ask a few preliminary questions just to clear the ground. Quite right, Annas, quite right. Now then, my man. By the way, Captain Elihu, I suppose he knows where he is and who I am. I should hope that everybody knew your reverence. Prisoner, you understand that you're in the presence of the Lord Annas, head of the high priestly family, and himself, former high priest of Israel? I know where I stand. Very well. Jesus Bar Joseph, you have been accused of breaking the law of Moses, of practicing witchcraft, and of aiding and abetting others to do the same. Now answer me. What exactly is the doctrine you preach? And why have you surrounded yourself with this gang of followers? What is behind all this? I make no secret of what I do. I have always preached and taught openly in temple and synagogue where all the world could hear me. Why question me? You know very well it is illegal. 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 There are plenty of people who know what I said. Your proper course is to call witnesses and interrogate them. That's no way to speak to his reverence, fellow. Mend your manners. You see what the man is. Obstinate and insolent. It's quite so, Annas, but unfortunately he seems to know something about court procedure. It is not legal to invite a man to incriminate himself. Evidence is not legal unless we have the agreement of two witnesses. Brother Shadrach, are you defending the man? Dear me, no. I only suggest that we are wasting valuable time. Prisoner, I hoped you would see reason and explain yourself uh, informally to these gentlemen and myself. But since you are recalcitrant and insist on a formal trial, you shall have it. We will all proceed to the sanitary where we have witnesses enough and to spare. Captain, bring the accused to the gasith. This way, fellow. Come along. Put another log on, Malchus. All right. These spring nights are chilly. Yeah. What time is it? Oh, I see. Getting on to cockcrow. Yeah, it's always cold. It's just before dawn. Here, yeah, stranger, uh, you're shivering. Uh, Come nearer the fire. Uh, oh, thank you. I'm quite all right here. I oh, say, Malchus, how's your ear? Oh, oh, oh I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> oh, that fellow Jesus healed it all right. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Witchcraft, cousin, that's what it is. Huh? I'd get the priest to look at it if I were oh. you. Might go bad on you. No. <laughs> I say, stranger, uh, you're a Galilean by your accent. What do you know about this, Jesus? You're not one of his people, are you? Of course not. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. You must have seen something of him in Galilee. Come on, speak up. Don't be shy. Yes. Stand forward. Let's have a look at you. I believe you are one of the prisoner's men. Yes. Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Damn you. Leave me alone. I tell you, I don't know the man. I never set eyes on him. I never... Well, you can see him now. Come on, lads, they're bringing the prisoner down. Peter, before the cock crows, you will disown me three times over. Before the cock crows? Oh, oh, master. 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 Hey there, Judas Iscariot. Who's that? The Baruch. I didn't recognize you in the early light of dawn. You better clear out of this. Your conspiracy's off. They've arrested Jesus. He's coming up for trial now before the Sanhedrin. Is he indeed? Yes, and Pontius Pilate has promised to ratify the findings. <laughs> then I suppose he's for it. Well, you were right. Jesus was incorruptible. I was always afraid he might be. Much good it's done him. I knew what had happened when he refused my offer. When he... What do you say? Jesus refused your offer? Of course he refused. Didn't you find out that much with all your amateur spying? But... I told him, if you come in war, take the horse. If in peace, take the ass. 
He took the ass. Baruch, are you lying to me? If you're speaking the truth, what are you doing here? Two poor lads of mine being turned off today. They were unlucky they got caught. But they'll die on two crosses without squealing. And they'll know I'm somewhere about to say goodbye to them. Well, it's a pity. If Jesus had listened to me... So he was innocent after all. Why? What did you think? I... I thought he... You thought he'd fallen for it. No more faith in him than that. Look. They're coming out of the high priest's house. There goes the Messiah. With his hands bound to answer for his follies. Well... Let him die. We've got no room for failures. Perhaps, uh, perhaps they'll acquit him. Huh, perhaps the cat will acquit the mouse. But, uh, yeah, what's the matter with you? You wanted him to suffer, didn't you? Now he's going to suffer. I hope you're pleased. If you had any guts, you'd be suffering with him. Why aren't you in court making a noble speech and clamouring to be martyred in the cause? But I, I didn't ah, mean... Talking's one thing. Suffering's another. I didn't know that... that, that, that I was going to ratify the findings of the sanitary. Well, oh, that means the cross. Have you ever seen a man crucified? Oh. There's nothing poetical about it. But it hurts, Judas. It hurts. Baruch, don't... Now's your moment to practice what you preach. Will you stand by your Messiah? Will you testify from the cross? Will you be eloquent from that pulpit? about the value and blessedness of pain, skewered up there in the broiling sun, like an owl on a barn door, with your joints cracking, your head on fire, and your tongue like leather. Oh, God, I... Will you say from there what you said to me? Damn you, be quiet. <laughs> Can't face it, eh? He's facing it. I know that quiet sort. He'll walk up to death with his eyes open and his mouth shut. Oh, no. And all you can do is to cringe and squeal. Yes. And how did Jesus get taken? Somebody squealed then, I fancy. Who was it? Who was it? Judas Iscariot? Let me go. Ah, what filth. Run, Rat. Run. You can't run away from yourself. So when the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes were assembled, Jesus was brought before the council, and they brought many witnesses against him, but their witness agreed not together. Father Annas, will you, or Brother Shadrach, tell the court again exactly what he said? I will, my Lord Caius. What? He said, which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say get up and walk? But to show you that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins... I say to this paralyzed man... I'm getting confused, Brother Shadrach. Who said what? To whom? Jesus said to us, just to show you that the Son of Man has Did power on Did he say earth. he was the Son of Man? I don't think he actually said so. We have what a witness you? here who says he did. No, no, this witness won't swear to the exact words. He says he mentioned the Son of Man. It is scarcely a crime to mention the Son of Man. But <laughs> we must have agreement about the words. <sighs> Joseph of Arimathea, Your reverence. Brother Nicodemus, Gaius. I do not like to suggest that you are being deliberately obstructive. And I don't like to suggest that the court is trying to wrest the evidence. I hope not. But agreement is essential if a case is to be made out. Quite so. It's no use presenting Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, with a case that's as full of holes as a calendar. Quite right, sure. To use your own words, most venerable, we want the thing watertight. I quite agree about that. Well, Father Annas, tell us about this other witness who accuses the prisoner of witchcraft and sacrilege. Three years ago, at Passover time, he was in the temple when this man Jesus caused a riot by interfering with the market. He heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and in three days I will build another made without Did hands. Did he say he would destroy it, or only that he could? He said because he if would. He said, uh, if that isn't witchcraft, what is it? As a matter of fact, you're both wrong. Okay. Okay. I, I was there, I remember. What he said was neither I will nor I can. Yes, but... but destroy this temple, and in three days I will build it again. That's I remember it distinctly. There is agreement, at least, about the claim to rebuild the temple in three days. 
Prisoner, you hear these witnesses. Have you any defense to make against the charge of witchcraft? Still silent? This obduracy will do you no good. My Lord Ernest, is there much more of this kind of evidence? Some 20 or 30 witnesses waiting. Because at this rate, between witnesses who all say different things and a prisoner who says nothing, we shall be here till tomorrow. I will interrogate the man myself. My Lord Caiaphas, that is barely legal. Barely legal, Brother Nicodemus, is still legal. He shall answer under the oath of testimony. Then, if he still refuses to speak, he is self-condemned. And if he exculpate himself? In that case, Joseph of Arimathea, we shall call the other 30 witnesses. Oh, no. <clears throat> Put the prisoner forward. Yeah. Jesus, bar Joseph. As you are a true Israelite, hearken and answer to me upon oath. I adjure you by the living God, you tell us whether you are the Messiah, the Christ of Israel. I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. Do you then say you are the Son of God? I am. What further need is there of witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What do you think of it? Jesus, bar Joseph, out of your own mouth you stand convicted of blasphemy in the highest degree and are condemned to die by sentence of the court. Take the prisoner aside. Come, prisoner. <laughs> Well, Reverend Brothers, considering it was done in such a hurry, that didn't go too badly. I had my doubts at one point, but all's well that ends well. Now we've only to see it safely past Pontius Pilate, and then we can look... Let me pass, I say! What's happening now? I must see the high priest. It's the man is carried. Come for more money, Father, and I said, I said, Don't give it him. Certainly not. Let me pass! All right, Levites, let him in. Well, my good man, what is it? I have sinned. I have betrayed the blood of the innocent. Oh, come now, come now. You're naturally distressed. Jesus is guiltless. He was never false to himself. He was never false to Israel. Rome has nothing against him. He consented to no conspiracy. He was not tried for conspiracy. He was tried for blasphemy. And duly condemned by the proper authority. We are not officially interested in his attitude to the Roman question. You acted on my information. All we needed from you was the opportunity to secure his person. And we are greatly obliged to you for your assistance. You came came to us of your own accord, Judas, and with the highest motives, I'm sure. I came because I hated him. The man who hates his brother is a murderer. I have murdered the Christ of God for hate. He was greater than I, and I hated him. And now I hate myself. Do you know what hellfire is? It's the light of God's unbearable innocence that sears and shrivels you like flame. It shows you what you are. Priest... It is a fearful thing to see oneself for a moment as one really is. What is all this to us? Your conscience is your own affair. What is it to you? You were the high priest. Day by day, week by week, month by month, you make the sacrifice for sin, the burnt offering and the peace offering and the trespass offering. Year by year, on the Day of Atonement, you enter the holy place and pour out blood before the mercy seat for the redemption of Israel. What can your priesthood do for me? There is no priest, no victim in all the world that is clean enough to purge my guilt. What shall I do? Caiaphas, high priest of Israel, what shall I do? We cannot listen to this raving. You have done your service and we have paid you well. Is that your last word, fellow murderer? What? Take back your money with the curse of Cain upon it. I am going to my own place. Captain of the guard, stop him. He's mad. Hold there. I am unclean. Unclean and accursed, unclean, accursed, accursed, accursed. And 
he departed and went and hanged himself. Then led they Jesus into the hall of judgment and delivered him unto Pontius Pilate the governor. And it was about three o'clock in the morning. Excellency, are you dressed? What's that? These Jews are here wanting their sentence ratified. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh. Curse them. Flavius, give me a hand with my cloak. Yes. Kept up half the night and now full military dress at crack of dawn. Who'd have my job? I suppose they've brought all the papers. Yes. Are they to come here to you in the Praetorium? No, no, I have to go out to them. If they came in here, they'd be defiled and couldn't hold their confounded ceremonies or something. Is that the report of their trial? Yes, Excellency. Will you read it now? I suppose I'd better give it to me. And send in the prisoner. Uh, yes, Excellency. By the way, Flavius, did you get anything from the police about that zealot, Baruch, whatever his name is? Oh, yes. He's known to be seditious. He's had a bunch of malcontents lying up in the hills all last month. Mm. And we've caught two of them, and they'll be executed tomorrow. Good. It doesn't look as if there's much to fear from Baruch, then. Ye gods! What's all this stuff? Blasphemy, Sabbath-breaking, witchcraft, law of Moses... Pages of it! I suppose they know what it's all about. Here is the prisoner now, sir. Good. Bring him in. This way. Let's have a look at him. Mm. He's a well-set-up fellow and looks you straight in the face. I like the appearance of him. It's a pity he's got to be executed. We could do with a man like that in the army. Oh, well. Flavius, have you put the warrant made out? Yes, Excellency. I take it that it's in order. Let's see. Jesus Bar Joseph of Nazareth, carpenter, 33 years old, convicted before the Sanhedrin, 14th Nizam, blasphemy and mm, all the rest of it. Sentence of death delivered to me, take and execute. All right, give me a pen. See who that is at the door, Flavius. Yes, Excellency. Give it to me, then. A note from Her Excellency, the Lady Claudia. Mm -hmm. She asked it should be delivered immediately, wherever you were. Oh, well, thanks. Now, what in the net? Here. Flavius. What do you think of this? Hmm? have nothing to do with that good man. I have had a terrible dream about him. That's brief and emphatic, Pilot. And scored with such urgency that the stylus has gone clean through the wax. Have nothing to do with him. Well, what am I to make of that? Well, Pilot, Her Excellency is a woman. Some ladies have soft hearts for handsome preachers. Flavius, you were born a slave. You may be a freedman now, but you still have the vulgar mind of a slave. Now, you learn to bear yourself like that peasant over there and keep your mouth shut. And someday you may get mistaken for a gentleman, not otherwise. Where's that report? Uh, yes, sir. It's just occurred to me that... Yes. Yes, I thought so. The prisoner was convicted not by the agreement of witnesses, but out of his own mouth, upon oath, under question from the court. Flavius, you're, well, quite an expert on this sort of thing. Is that good Jewish law? I don't say there's no precedent for it, but it certainly is rather irregular. Yes, and the tale about Baruch seems doubtful. Now, why all this hurry and hugger-mugger? I don't like it. I think they're up to some game. Flavius? Excellency? I shall not sign the warrant. I'm going to retry this case. Is Caiaphas there? Yes, sir. He's outside with a bunch of elders. Very well. Come with me. We'll go out to them. Oh, um, the prisoner can wait here. Hello, good morning, Good morning. Good morning. What's your accusation against this man? If he were not a criminal, we should not have delivered him to you. As far as I can see, this is an entirely Jewish question. Take him and deal with him according to your own law. It's not a matter for Rome. By our law, he has already been convicted and condemned to death. But by Roman law, we are denied authority to execute the sentence. By what offence has he incurred the death penalty? He pretends to be the Messiah. Well, what does that mean? It amounts to a claim to be king of all Israel. There's nothing about that in your court proceedings. 
I understood he was condemned for blasphemy. To us, such a claim is blasphemy, but in Roman eyes, it is presumably treason. Oh, I see. This is a new charge. Treason to Rome. Uh, I'll go and interrogate the prisoner and see what this claim amounts to. Flavius? Uh, yes, Excellency. Uh, had I better send for an interpreter? Uh, oh, yes, I expect it. Wait a minute. I'll find out. Here, you, fellow. You have no Latin, of course. Can you speak Greek? Sufficiently. Good, that saves trouble. Now then, what do you call yourself? Are you the king of the Jews? Are you asking me that on your own account? Or is that what they have told you about me? Am I a Jew? Your own nation and your own priests have delivered you up to me. Now, what have you been doing? What is all this about being a king? My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. Mm -hmm. If it were, I should have come with men and arms to protect me from my countrymen. <laughs> But my kingdom does not rest upon force or any human authority. It is not of this world at all. But you are a king of some kind. That is your word and not mine. But it is the right word, in one sense. What is your word for yourself? They call you the man born to be king. The end for which I was born and came into the world was that I should bear witness to truth. Everyone that has the truth within him recognizes my voice as the voice of truth. Truth? What is truth? Flavius. Yes, Excellency. Come here. I don't believe there's any harm in the fellow at all. I think he's just a crank. He reminds me of my old Greek tutor. He and his cronies were always wrangling about truth and the world of ideas and that sort of thing. All right, Flavius, you needn't put that down. Anything I say in Latin's off the record. I'm going to tell Caiaphas there's nothing in it. Drag the prisoner along. We'll get rid of this business and then go to breakfast. Oh, well, now, worthy Caiaphas, here's your man. I've examined him, and I find no fault in him at all. There's nothing I can take action about. There is a whole list of subsidiary charges against him. Uh, read His Excellency the charge sheet. In addition to the blasphemy of which he was convicted, he has violated the rights of property, having from time to time destroyed a valuable herd of swine and of fig tree, interfered with the temple market and caused a riot thereby. He has offended against public morals and the Jewish law by breaking the Sabbath, denying the validity of oaths sworn at the altar, instigating young people to defy parental control, consorting with dissolute persons, and attempting to undermine the authority of Sanhedrin. He is either a charlatan or a sorcerer, professing that he can perform miraculous cures, raise the dead, and destroy and rebuild the temple by magic. He foments political dissension, calling for the establishment of an independent Jewish kingdom, and when challenged about the payment of imperial tribute, he returned an equivocal answer. Prisoner, you seem to have committed every crime in the calendar. Do you want to make any reply? No. By the gods, Flavius, this man's a marvel. He can hold his tongue and keep his dignity. He ought to be a Roman. My Lord High Priest, I cannot receive a case presented in this hasty and irregular manner. I will discharge the prisoner with a caution, and in the meantime... It is not safe to leave him at large. He has been preaching sedition up and down the country, beginning in Galilee and ending in Jerusalem Galilee. itself. Galilee. Yes, by Pollux, he's a Galilean, isn't he? He comes from Nazareth. Why, he's not in my jurisdiction at all. Jesus of Nazareth is not in my jurisdiction. Not in my Here, Captain, take him along to the Tetrarch of Galilee with my compliments and my humblest apologies for having unintentionally usurped Herod's prerogative. I'm sorry, good Caiaphas, but I cannot possibly ratify your sentence. Good morning to you. Oh, Flavius. If only I'd had the wit to think of that last night. <laughs> well, of all. From Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee, a letter to Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea. Greetings. I am deeply obliged, Your Excellency, for sending me Jesus, Bar Joseph. I had long been anxious to see him, having heard many sensational stories. Oh, alas, he was a disappointment, as this letter will tell you. 
I asked him all the questions I could think of, but he was sullen and refused to speak. Oh, not nearly such good entertainment as his cousin John Baptist, whom I regretfully beheaded last year. Then, understanding that Jesus was a miracle worker, I invited him to perform a few prodigies for our amusement. Oh, but no. He would only shake his head and stare at me with those large eyes of his till I was quite out of countenance. As for the kingship of Israel, so far as I am concerned, he's welcome to it. But I fancy that Imperial Caesar might find him uncooperative, so pray receive him back with my good wishes, since I find that he belongs to you after all. Though, as you say, he was brought up at Nazareth in my Tetrarchy of Galilee, I find he was born at Bethlehem in your province of Judea, the place, incidentally, where the Christ is supposed to be born. Oh, indeed, I believe that this accidental circumstance working upon the flighty brain has engendered in him all this messianic fantasy. The purple robe I've put upon him to mock him, I beg you by this letter to keep for Herod's sake. You and I have been quarrelling too long about a foolish trifle. Let Jesus be the peacemaker between you, my dear Pontius Pilate, and I, Herod the Tetra. How much longer is this going on? I don't think Pilate's satisfied with the evidence. He's gone in to consult with his clerk. I don't know what's come over him. He was perfectly all right yesterday. He's in a dangerous temper now. There's a nasty crowd collecting. The one thing we wanted to avoid. The story's got about. It's probably getting about. But I fancy a lot of them have come to demand the release of the Passover prisoner. What? Great heavens, I'd forgotten that. Yes, but Pontius Pilate will remember. Or that sharp lawyer of a clerk will remind him. If the people ask for Jesus, we are done. Somebody must go down into the crowd and get up a good outcry for, uh, for who, uh, who's a likely choice. The brigand Barabbas is the popular favourite. The very man. Violently nationalist and a bluff, attractive rascal. Now, who can we get... Don't worry, most venerable. I have engaged a good agitator already. I can see him down there. Shade rack, you're a genius. You think of everything. <laughs> Here comes the governor. My Lord High Priest and members of the Sanhedrin, yeah, you exactly. brought me this man, Jesus of Nazareth, accused of fermenting sedition among the people. I have examined him, both in your presence and privately, and can find no substance in these accusations. Further, I sent him to Herod, the Tetrarch of Galilee, who reports that nothing done by Jesus in that province renders him liable to the death penalty. The most I can establish is that his behavior has been rather indiscreet. I'm therefore having him flogged to teach him a little caution and shall discharge him. That, that will not satisfy us. It will satisfy justice and it will satisfy the Passover custom. Flavius, speak to the people, will you? You can talk their confounded lingo. Yes, Excellency. Attention, you Jews! This is your festival, and as you know, it's your privilege to demand the release of a prisoner. The governor is here in person to see that you get your rights. Wait a moment, I'll speak to them myself. Silence for the governor! You may not all know it. But I have here another prisoner, whom the Sanhedrin have sentenced to death. The man called Jesus of Nazareth. They haven't all got that, Clavius. Tell them in Hebrew. Jesus of Nazareth has been sentenced to death by the Sanhedrin. Right up there! 
Which of the two do you want released? Barabbas the robber or Jesus whom you call Christ? Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? Jesus! And the cross with him! Crucify him! Mm, these people are being got at. Why should Jesus be crucified? What crime has he committed? We have a law, and by that law he ought to die because he claims to be the son of God. The son of a god? What is all this? The son of the gods? My wife sees visions. And they say he raises the dead. Officer, fetch me the prisoner. At once, Your Excellency. I must know what this means. I tell you, Flavius, I've never had much use for religion, but those old stories, they, they say the gods have walked the earth before now. Be careful what you say, Pilot. They're all watching you. Look, they're bringing the man in. You think the gods look like that? Heaven help me. I don't know. His face troubles me. That's human blood upon it. Blood from the scourging you ordered, Pilot, and from the crown of thorns your soldiers have mockingly put on his head. Human blood, Pilot. Not the celestial ichor that runs in the veins of immortals. Use common sense. I've never known you lose your nerve before. Come here, Jesus, Messiah. to no other things. This fellow calls himself a king. We deny it. Do you admit it? To claim the crown is treason to Caesar. If you let this fellow go, you are a traitor to... Flavors, bring me water. At once, Excellency. Now, listen to me. Rome has nothing against this man. If you send him to the cross, it is your responsibility. Look now. Bear witness, all of you. I wash my hands of this case. I am innocent of the blood of this guiltless man. On your heads be it. Now, come with me, Flavius. Quickly! They've beaten us, Flavius. For God's sake, take this man away and give them that brute, Barabbas. Get on, Flavius, get on. What are you waiting for? Caiaphas is here, Excellency. He wants the superscription for the cross. Oh, yes, the title and accusation. Yes. Take this and let them all see it. Let it be written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Excellency, right... Not the king of the Jews, but that he said I am the king of the Jews. My Lord Caiaphas, what I have written, I have written. The Princes of This World was the tenth of a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, the man born to be king. In Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers, Jesus was played by John Westbrook. Also appearing were Gabriel Wolfe, Alan Wheatley, Heron Carvick, Stephen Jack, Edward Atienza, Keith Alexander, Miriam Margulies, Francis de Wolfe, Malcolm Hayes, John Wise, Howison Kolf, Trader Faulkner, Alec Clunes and Philip Lever. It was dramatised and produced by Raymond Rakes. 
and on Monday in the penultimate play, it's the day of the crucifixion, and Mary and Mary Magdalene can only look on in despair.